Denmark. This is Knud Eriksen. We're here at a two-day seminar called The Revolt Against Civilization. And uh, I have here with me uh, Professor Helmut Nyborg, who's also a uh, Dane like me. And he just yesterday gave us a very interesting lecture uh, on the, uh, the state of the Western civilization. And the, uh, uh, the title of it was IQ, Immigration and Europe's Future. Indeed, a very interesting title. And today, so we would like to uh, go a little bit deeper into these questions and also see exactly what, what uh, person is Dr. Helmut Nyborg. So welcome, Professor Nyborg. Thank you. And uh, I enjoyed your, your speech yesterday very much. I must say, it is a, it's a lot of data, a lot of figures. Uh, I got the essence of it, I think. But we'll try to maybe uh, make it even more plain what what is your message? Um, anyway, you've been out of the media circus for, for a couple of years. I remember your face from the TV, always was something controversial. <laughs> Last time I remember was um, uh, you said something about women not being as intelligent as men. I was a little bit happy that it wasn't the other way around. But then, of course, we know women more beautiful and better in the kitchen, right? So <laughs> it's all handled by, by God, I suppose, that these differences are there and for some reason. Anyway, we can't go against science. But I think it's important to add that it is the statistical average difference. Exactly. The next woman entering the room might be the best gifted person in the universe. But we have to, we have to We're need... talking about averages and dispersion. Exactly. And, and people often forget that. They think that, now you think that every woman is just uh, relegated to the kitchen. Uh, and, and that's just stupid. That's just stupid. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, uh, what you did yesterday, uh, the essence of that, uh, well, we'll come to, to the, the, uh, the specific dangers, but the thing was that if we do like the Swedes, was what you said in a, in a recent article, in a chronicle, in a, the newspaper, Jürgen's Post last year, September, 15th of September, you warned that if we do like Sweden, just let everybody in from the third world, we will actually lose our culture, our... Uh, civilized uh, state of affairs and actually in, in, in the end we'll lose the, the very people because we're going to be taken over by these more fertile third worlders. That was the main uh, message and then you also uh, mentioned this problem of the intelligence uh, of, these, um, of these immigrants. This is what we're, we're going to, to get into today. Uh, and you, I remember you already had a, a discussion with a, a so-called brain expert in the uh, in the Danish TV, I, I enjoy that a lot because uh, I do like this guy as a as an entertainer, but I think he did very poorly with <laughs> with uh, his uh, so-called intelligence. He's called the brain medicine. I would just uh, confine him to being Mr. Medicine in the future. <laughs> All right, so. Um, um, you asserted that there were these racial differences, that was the problem at that time uh, with him. And he said, no, no, e every brain in the world is exactly the same. It's just a matter of what you put into it, what kind of culture is around him. What would you say to that? I think this is not a matter of attitudes. This is a matter of measurement. And if you go around the world and measure intelligence in different parts of the world, you will find enormous differences. And these differences actually is connected with the state of democracy in the country. If you go to a country with a fairly high intelligence, above 90 say, then you will see that many or most of these countries have democracy. But nations with average IQ lower than 90 seems to find it difficult to establish the democratic infrastructure that is necessary for a free society. And that worries me. That should worry the politicians as well, as they're talking about the democracy all the time, but they want to export to the rest of the world. Yes, but the problem with the politicians is that they do not know this, or even if they know it, they will lose the voters, and that's a thing that politicians cannot live with. They have been poorly informed by the social scientists because social scientists have for decades been under the assumption that man is created by society. 
So if you talk about biology or inheritance, then they simply either deny it or they call you a bad moral person. Which of course goes back to uh, the time before the, the, the Second World War and even further back maybe, uh, where it was, you had this eugenic uh, movement and the, the racial question was much more uh, in the foreground. Uh, like with Mr. Uh, Lothar Stoddard, friends, uh, Stoddard who, is, who is actually given the, uh, the, uh, the title to this, uh, to this seminar, The Revolt Against Civilization, that was the title of this book. And he said, of course, something which seems a bit, a bit obvious to, to us, that um, uh, it's, the, uh, it's, it's the quality of the people that determine what kind of, 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 of society you have, which kind of uh, political system they can uphold. And his main thesis was, of course, if you get down to a certain level, well, you can't uphold any kind of civilization. Uh, it will go back to the jungle. And um, actually, that's your warning to us, isn't it, with the, uh, with the, the immigration and, and then also another problem. It's actually quite simple. Europe today has such a low fertility rate that we are disappearing from the earth and from for every day there will be fewer Danes available and Europeans for the next generation. Now if you su supplant them with people from other countries, if they have the same IQ, it's not really a problem. Mm -hmm. But if they have lower IQ, it all adds up to a lower IQ for the average of the nation. Pretty obvious. And given that it's difficult to have a democracy with an IQ lower than 90, Mm -hmm. then democracy will be doomed to the extent that you have low IQ influence or influx. Exactly. And uh, I remember that about, uh, that about a year ago, a little bit less, there was uh, this um, ex-banger, top banger from Germany, Mr. Tilo Sarasin, I think mm -hmm. he pronounced. Yes. He said exactly the same as you, but for Germany. And so we have a little bit we can measure a little bit. What, what, what was the reaction? What did he say? Was it the same or a little bit different from what you said? Oh, it was a disaster for him because everybody condemned him. But actually, he was only referring to data that have been known for at least 80 or 100 years. Mm -hmm. So he said nothing new, but he dared break the spell about talking about these things. Mm -hmm. Very creative. Today, if you talk about inheritance, intelligence, and individual and group differences, you are actually considered a bad, morally bad person. Yeah. And that come, goes back to the 1930s to the influential American Franz Boas School from Columbia University. It goes back to the Soviet ban on talking about biological differences among people. And it actually also goes back to Nazi Germany where people are accusing you of being a Nazi if you talk about biology. Yeah. So they are mixing the ideological discussion with the factual, factual discussion of the data, exactly. which is a disaster. And of course, in the meantime, we just slowly, or rather quickly, uh, disappear from, uh, from the Earth. And in the meantime, it's going to be very uh, nasty picture that we see with crimes, uh, uh, skyrocketing with uh, cultural uh, wars actually and with an intelligence where people can hardly go to school and what, what kind of school would that be? If, if I think it will be a radically different school from the one we have today because around 2050 I have projected that more than half the pupils in Danish primary schools will consist of the people not born in this country and predominantly people with an IQ between 70 and 85. 70 and 85, isn't that about uh, what they have to go to institutions to be looked after? Well, yes, but uh, the normal uh, limit is an IQ 70 for whether you are considered low ability or not. Mm. But it seems that it's more differentiated than that. Africans can actually function quite nicely with an IQ 70. I see. That's interesting. So I didn't, I didn't there, 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 there's more to it than just a, a limit. But undoubtedly, if, that's the, the, if the projection comes true, 
we will see a Danish school that will be radically different from the one we have today. When, when the uh, complaints that you see uh, today would be like nothing compared to what, what we see then? All sorts of learning difficulties will appear and more and more people in Denmark will never be able to fulfill even a primary school and that means they will have no further education mm. and that means in a modern high-tech society they will be uh, restricted to, to uh, living from uh, social uh, help from the state and this will be a, a situation that will be very difficult for a welfare state to keep its status on how can politicians, how can the media not look at texts like that and, and just research it and give you a voice? Isn't that about the most strange thing you can, you can imagine in a, in a democracy, in, a, in, a, in an enlightened society? I think it's a catastrophe. And now if you look at the situation of the single politician, if he is going to tell what, say what I am saying, he will actually lose the voices. So the people are actually contributing to this development and any minister who doesn't want to lose his uh, expensive car, he would say this is a no-go. I, perhaps I know that this is so, but I can't say it because then I will lose my power. Hmm. So there's a, a game going on where undoubtedly some leading politicians and intellectuals know perfectly well what's going on, they but they uh, appreciate their good position, so they won't say it. What could wake them up? I mean, they all, most of them have children, grandchildren even, with the ages that they, they have in, in, the, in the Danish parliament and ministers. Wouldn't they worry a little about uh, the, the future of their children and grandchildren, would you think? I think this is the worst part of it. Because of their short-sightedness, they want their privileges when they are here. They actually are ready to sell the next generation to a bad future. Yeah, and uh, I think that is ruthless. And I think something should be done about it, but exactly what, I don't know, given the conditions right now. It's a criminality. I mean, when you have the responsibility of looking after the population, whether you're a minister at the top, or you're a, pol you're a politician in the parliament, or a, uh, a journalist who is uh, about we call them the third uh, power in the in the uh, in the society, and they're probably the strongest today, even stronger than the uh, the legal system and the uh, the lawmakers and so on. It's, uh, I mean, the media run everything. If they don't want something, they go after a person for a month or two months, and you have a difficult time with his neighbors with his job. Oh, yes. you, you you've experienced that. Could you give us a little bit of? Uh, background, just what happened when you said women were less intelligent than men? That was when the whole trouble started for you, I think. And I think first I would like to address one of the questions you raised. Why don't people do something about exactly. it? Exactly, that is very When important. you had the situation, I'm old enough to be a child of the Second World War. I was four years old when the Second World War started. Most of my family were freedom fighters. And some were caught and some were beaten up by the Nazis and so on. And it was a very unpleasant situation. But that was a situation that you could face. You were invaded by some people mm -hmm. coming over the borders and taking your country away from you. Mm -hmm. That was an easy situation to react to. Yeah. But the situation we have today is that slowly you are invaded by people or in, you invite the people to come here and, and as they have a higher fertility rate they will slowly take over the country and that's a very slow process.